the World Cup in Qatar is just a few days to start. And uh, if I tell you that the Qataris are having it easy, I will be a liar. I will be lying to you because it looks like as the days goes closer to the World Cup, more pressure is being added to Qatar. You remember in my last video, I mentioned that the Emir of Qatar came out and was complaining that the West is practicing double standard and that the West and other human rights groups are just fabricating lies just to slander the name of Qatar. He said that Qatar has done a lot to fix the human rights issue, immigrant workers issue, that initially they welcome all complaints, thinking the complaints were legitimate and they have made enough changes to many rules and regulations in the country, just so it could benefit the migrant workers. But recently, they, the Qataris, have found out that the West is just out to slander and to fabricate stories about them. So, he was very disappointed at what the West is doing because he believes that the West, they are not out to help Qatar, but they are just out to make Qatar look bad in the national scene. So there's this other article that I'm going to share with you. And the headline reads, Migrant workers in Qatar left in debt after being ordered home for World Cup to start. So according to the headline, the migrant workers who have built all the structures in Qatar that will be used for the World Cup have now been ordered way to go home because maybe, and I said maybe, the Qataris government does not want the international press and many observers to meet them in Qatar. Because I know this World Cup is a very big thing and there will be a lot of reporters from all over the world in Qatar. So maybe, maybe, the Qatari uh, authorities just want them to leave before the World Cup starts. Because if they are there when the World Cup is going on, they might say something that they were not supposed to say. So to be on the safe side, it's better to kick all of them out before the World Cup begins. But before we start with the article, let me ask you this question. Have you ever been to Qatar? Do you know of any person who has been to Qatar? Do you know of anyone who is still in Qatar? Have you heard stories about migrant workers in Qatar? If you have, if you've been, please share your experience with us in the comment section below. We would like to know what you think. So, leave your comments below. Now, let's continue with the article. Thousands of poorly paid migrant workers in Qatar are being forced to return home before the World Cup, leaving many fearing they will be left jobless, unable to support their families, and deep in debt. In some cases, workers say they have been sent back before the end of their contracts or without receiving their full salary or allowances. The moves to send migrant workers back to their home countries before the beginning of the FIFA tournament appears to be linked to a government circular published last year, which ordered some contractors to complete all works by mid-September and prepare a plan for workers' leave that maximizes the reduction in the number of workers in the country in the run-up of the World Cup. So according to what this article is saying, migrant workers in Qatar are being forced to move out of the country even before their contract expire. The reason for this is because the government of Qatar do not want them to be there when the World Cup starts. Maybe Maybe the Qatari authorities are worried that the migrant workers might say something to international press and media. 
That is why they would rather those migrants leave the country before the workup starts. Let's continue. When the Guardians visited in the summer, hundreds of migrant workers dressed in blue overall were working in the stifling humidity to complete a revamp of a popular walkway and the road alongside it, known as the Koniche, which is expected to be a destination for thousands of tourists and football fans once the tournament begins. The Guardian interviewed 25 laborers employed on the Koniche. Most said they had expected to be in Qatar for two years, but were being sent home far sooner, in some cases after just 10 months. Many of those interviewed have now returned to their home countries. Some workers who spoke to the Guardian said they had not been working long enough to repay their huge sums, equivalent to four or five months basic salary in Qatar, that they borrowed to pay recruitment agents in their home countries to secure their jobs in Qatar. We don't want to go back. We are poor, so we need to work, said a Nepali worker, who said he had been forced to pay the equivalent of almost £1,000 in illegal recruitment fees to secure the job. I have not yet paid back the fees. I will be in loss if I am sent back. So sad, my brother and sister. So sad. You see, in this world, there are many people who are so less privileged. There are many people who just only want to work and support their families. And I do understand that it's not the job of Qatar or it's not the job of the Qatari authority to make sure that those migrant workers can be financially okay. Because I do believe they have their own countries where they came from. But I also believe that as humans who we are, we must learn to treat other people with respect and dignity. We must do unto others what we expect them to do unto us. So when I hear stories like this, I feel too sad because I think that the Qatari authorities can do better. Remember, 90% of the population of Qatar is made up of foreigners. Qatar by population is a very small country. And Qatar is so, so rich. So they can do more to help migrant workers if they have the will to do it. They can do it if they want because they have the means to do it. But for some reason, I do not understand. They really don't want to do it. And that is why sometimes international organizations have to force their hands into doing things. They have tried to fix the labor laws in Qatar. They have tried to change some of the things when it comes to the migrant workers in Qatar. But this only came to be after many human rights groups forced the hand of Qatar into doing it. If not, they will not do it. So it's so sad. And I want to use the opportunity to say to everyone that is going to be watching the match, like I have said in my previous video, when watching that game, please reflect on all those people who have worked day in, day out to build those structures that you are now enjoying. Think about them. Some of them, no one will ever know their names. Some of them, you never see them. But they are the people who have worked so hard to construct all those structures. It's really sad, my brothers and sisters. It's really, really sad. And now, Qatar has decided to kick them out even before their contract ends. And sometimes I understand 
Qatar has to protect Qatar. That's just the way it is. But at least they should show some compassion towards the migrant workers. It's really sad. So let's continue with the article. Others were in a state of confusion, saying they were being sent back, but had been told they may be recalled after the World Cup. They are now facing up to six months with no salary while they wait to see if they will be able to return. All the workers interviewed said they had no choice but to leave. Many have already been sent and others are on the list. If your name is on the list, you have to go, one said. Many blame the World Cup for the sudden end of their work. Everyone will be sent back because of the World Cup. It doesn't matter how long you have been there, said one. What can I do? I am helpless. Ali said he paid an agent in India 100,000 rupees, that is about 1,050 pounds, to secure his job. To afford the fee, he borrowed money at a steep 10% interest rate, but calculated that over two years he could be paid the debt and still earn enough to support his wife and two sons. But only 10 months after arriving in Qatar, he was now expecting to be sent home at any moment. I don't know when I'll be sent, but I know I have to go. Two or three of my friends have already been notified, he said. Now, how will I survive when I go back? How will I pay back my debt, he asked, as he walked to a currency exchange to swap Qatari rears for Indian rupees. So my brothers and sisters, these are stories from migrant workers in Qatar. The reason I am bringing these stories to you is because sometimes if you do not hear about these stories, you might not believe what is going on around the world. So these stories should serve you as evidence to let you know that there are many things going on around the world that require your voice, that require your opinion, that require you to add your voice to the call in the hopes that things might change. The workers in Qatar, those who have built all the infrastructures in Qatar, are not being taken care of properly. So it's left for all of us to create more awareness about this in the hope that the Qatari government will do something, will come up with a plan on how to compensate all those people who has helped in building Qatar. So to you guys out there, what is your take on this story? Do you think that the Qatari government should be responsible for these people or their home country should be responsible for them? Do you think they deserve any compensation from the Qatari government and from FIFA? Let us know in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. Please kindly like this video, share this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our Facebook page. Little deeds of goodwill like this one helps the channel a lot and we are very, very grateful. Thank you very much and see you in the next one. Cut.